Hello, I'm Marianne Cherry, and I'm here to talk to you about my book, Mars Kite, Humanist, Liberationist, Fantabulist, A Story of Gay Rights and Gay Wrongs. Morris was a post-Stonewall, nonviolent gay revolutionary. The nonviolent part is very important. In addition to us celebrating the 50th anniversary of the first gay pride parade, this year we're also celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Gay Liberation Front. The GLF of their day would be compared to the BLM movement of today. The Black Lives Matters movement is making serious headway and uh, affecting some positive change, which is the same thing what the GLF did in 1970. They covered a lot of area in a short amount of times. So there were so many pockets of society that needed to be addressed for the inequities towards homosexuals, and there was one particular area that they wanted to corner. Diagnosis, gay. Probably no mainstream profession, including law enforcement and organized religion, administered crueler treatment or did more harm to homosexuals than those representing the mental health profession. The psychologists and psychiatrists of the 20th century adhered to draconian beliefs without any medical basis declaring homosexuality abnormal and something to be cured. Modern barbaric treatments included electroshock therapy, isolation, and sometimes lobotomies. With few exceptions, the psychiatric profession posed serious hazards to the survival of homosexuals. Kite and other leaders recognized that the diagnostic code needed to change before gays could be safe with head shrinkers and the like. In 1970, protests against the American Psychiatric Association in San Francisco and Chicago and at the Federal Building in downtown Los Angeles. Nothing garnered the desired response, nor was given any media coverage. Stanley Williams remembers Morris arranged for a scream-in at the office of a psychiatrist who claimed he could cure homosexuality with a primal scream. That demonstration drew about 10 people. The American Psychiatric Association slightly upgraded homosexuality as a perversion in its list of disorders. The GLF responded with a position paper saying, no way. Kite said to Dahlmeyer, the American Psychiatric Association ordered its annual convention to be held at the Biltmore Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. We learned that a British psychologist was coming to do a slideshow on curing homosexuality. How this monster was doing that was through aversion conditioning, behavioral modification, aversion therapy. He would have you describe a gay experience, and in the meantime, negative things would be going on. Very glum music would play, and you'd see ugliness on the slides. This monster was interrupting a natural evolutionary process. And so we of the GLF planned to attend his lecture. The men wore jackets and ties. Well, some of the women wore jackets and ties too, by the way. And off we went to the Biltmore Hotel. In contrast, Carolyn Weathers remembers gay livers dressed in hippie clothes with roach clips. When the lights were down, Kite and the band of GLFers serotypously snuck in through the series of closed doors and quietly sat down, dispersed throughout the lecture room. Weathers says, Dr. Philip Feldman from England was presenting this program and he had a video of this young man who was trying to cure of homosexuality and he would show the young man a tape of a beautiful woman and there would be no electric shock. He'd show him a tape of a handsome man, he'd receive an electric shock. Howard Fox remembers, I have this friend Steve Morrison who has this loud booming voice and as the film was being shown he shouted, how much of this shit are we, are we going to sit here and watch? Weathers remembers, and that was our cue. The rest of us stood up. It was mixed men and women, maybe 30 of us, and we all stood up and said, hell no. And we got up out of our seats and walked up to the stage and would not let Dr. Feldman proceed with his presentation. He wasn't pleased about that. Fox said, Don Kill Hefner went up to the microphone I made an announcement that we were the Gay Liberation Front of Los Angeles and we were taking over the meeting that we were going to divide the participant into small groups and that there were going to be workshops and that we would reconvene in an hour or two to discuss what had taken place. In the interim, we were going to teach them about something that they knew nothing about, which was what it was to be gay. 
Some of the doctors were incensed and outraged. One man in particular was just livid and furious that we were doing this to them. And finally, his colleagues calmed him down. He threatened to call the police, and we said, fine, go ahead. The media needs to see how professionals treat people whom they claim are sick. Brenda Weathers addressed the room of mental health professionals with a few words on behalf of lesbians. The lecture portion of the GLF demonstration was over. Carolyn Weathers remembers, we did ask the people who attended the psychiatrist convention to join us in small groups, talk to us, and eventually they did decide to do that. The men and women of the GLF would talk to groups of three, five, six psychiatrists, and many of them said it was the first time they realized they were talking to well and happy gays and lesbians. They'd always only encountered people who'd been made so miserable by it because of homophobia, but they did not seek cures, they so-called cures. Contact was made and it was the beginning of contact with the American Psychiatric Association. Del Juan remembers, we gathered in groups around the room to discuss our concerns and answer their questions. And we thanked everybody ever so graciously. And Morris made an announcement, thanked us for listening, and we left with great success. Dr. Marsden and most of the other professionals at the meeting came to learn that Many homosexuals feel that psychology has been used by the state and society as a means of punishing the homosexual, often through imprisonments and institutionalization. There were nonviolent protests. Eventually, mental health professionals developed new positions regarding homosexuality. In 1973, the American Psychiatric Association removed homosexuality from the list of mental disorders, and in 1975, the American Psychological Association followed suit. In January 1970, Kite spoke at a symposium hosted by the California State Psychological Association in San Diego under the name Morris Kite, Ph.D. It was not an uncommon mistake and one that Kite never corrected. And now this next little section that I'm going to read to you has to do with a famous ruse that Morris pulled off. They had a real hard time getting the word gay and the word homosexual into the newspapers. The press just wouldn't cover it. They figured if they don't cover it, then it doesn't exist. Morris had a plan. A sparsely settled rural area in the Sierra Mountains of Northern California on the Nevada border, Alpine County, had a population of slightly more than 400 with 384 eligible voters. Jack, Don Jackson first proposed, proposed his novel idea in December of 1969 at the Gay Symposium at Sherwood Forest in Berkeley. He reasoned that lesbian and gay folk could move there quickly, become a majority, govern themselves, and be free at last. Jackson envisioned a gay colony as a quicker way to freedom. Kite immediately opposed the idea, saying that it smacked of cultural nationalism, separatism, and would reinforce stereotypes posed by the oppressor culture. I thought they were all crazy. We can't do that. We can't go into the country. We'd starve to death. I poo-pooed it. I didn't say that publicly, but it was just my private thing. Fed up with oppression, many still wanted to go away and just be gay. They thought it was a good idea, and Jackson discreetly proceeded with his plan for a gay mecca. Frustrated by the lack of mainstream media coverage given to any gay movement, about a year later, Kite rethought his reaction to the Alpine County scheme. He recognized the potential publicity value. Kite thought, wait a minute, Don Jackson has a capital idea. So I brought together a few of the folks, and I said, let's do it. Let's take over Alpine County, but don't. Let's agree among ourselves that we'll fake it, that we're going to be serious, we'll stare into the camera and we'll say we're taking over Alpine County. We're creating la-di-da, la-di-da. And so we held a press conference. It was a carefully crafted two-page single-space press release. A country in California where 200 gays would constitute a majority of registered voters. After the elections, they would make use of the $2 million the county receives annually from state and federal sources. John Platania remembers, people were just homophobic enough to believe and fear it. We made flyers saying, come to Alpine County, the new gay mecca. Harry Kaplan remembers, there was a great debate going on at the time whether we should try to separate ourselves as homosexuals from the oppressive rule of straight society and form our own social unit both politically and geographically. 
Years later, Kite still laughed when recalling his press conference to say that the Gay Liberation Front had met and had voted among ourselves unanimously, we might add, to take over Alpine County. Very quickly, we recruited pioneers ready to move, and very quickly we expect to move there and establish homes, a university, the first gay and lesbian university where we will teach gay studies. We expect to have farms and ranches and craft shops, and we expect to be a citadel of intellectual and activity, activist activity on the part of the gay, lesbian gay community. The following morning, Kite remembers, NBC, with one of their famous reporters standing on a piece of land in Alpine County, said, I'm standing on the land where, which has been bought by the Gay Liberation Front. It is here where we are going to build their homes. And I thought, good grief, if he can tell that big of a lie, I feel less of a liar than him. So then we just held a daily press conference. It was a media coup. By mid-October, the United Press International and Associated Press picked up the story, drawing national attention. Over a so, over hundred local and city newspapers and radio stations covered Alpine County story, including the one outlet whose refusal to report about gay liberation irritated Kite the most, the Los Angeles Times. Gays and straights were taking the scam seriously. Many lesbians and gays began to organize around it, making plans to uproot their lives and relocate to the region where the sun is seen for only 90 days and the snow falls 25 feet deep. Howard Fox said, Alpine County, which is really a godforsaken place, not too far from Lake Tahoe, it's a ski resort at times. It's just freezing and no, play, no place anybody gay would want to live. But we carried forth with this whole sham, and Morris was giving press reports about how the penetration of Alpine County had commenced. The momentum of the scheme was buoyed by Kite's natural humor. Carolyn Weathers says, we, the gays and lesbians, were going to take over Alpine County. We were going to be like the pioneers in covered wagons, and of course there was all this brouhaha. We, the gay liberation front, were running around handing out buttons saying Alpine County or bust. People took, up a, took it up as a great idea. There'd be a guy at GLF sewing blankets and quilts and people were sending food supplies and all this for when we took over Alpine County. My sister Brenda thought it actually was never meant to be. In other words, it was just agitation propaganda to get attention to further the cause. They never intended for us to really do it, but it got its own momentum. That doesn't mean it wasn't a great idea. Many people took it seriously. Gay people were quitting their jobs, putting their homes on the market, and getting ready to put down deposits on property in Alpine County. Del Juan remembers Morris cooked up the takeover scheme as a publicity stunt, agitprop, to get the media attention and bring GLF to public attention. Many gay people took the plan to set up a gay county seriously and were very upset when they eventually realized that Morris was just making waves to stir up public attention for gay civil rights. Morris was having fun, enjoying the press coverage and being quoted in the news constantly. Quote, Morris Kite told newsmen Wednesday about a dozen of the GLF members would be on the steps of the Alpine County Courthouse. And we have a five to 20 year plan to preserve the environment of Alpine County. The story went national. It, was, it, it had just hit fire. And, it, and by mid-December of 1970, Weather in the high Sierras was quite harsh. Temperatures slid down to 15 degrees. No one from Southern California, GLF or otherwise, would be found in Alpine County. The windy weather, the sheriff was quoted in a newspaper, was not conducive to visitors. The sheriff felt the gays had been defeated and repelled. There's deep white snow on the ground and the icicles are two feet long. Alpine County is a virtual fairyland, but not the kind they want. Kite says, then it was time to blow the bubble. We announced that our forces had grown too large and Alpine County simply wouldn't hold us and we were moving on to somewhere else. And we gradually killed the story off. But it was still going. The story continued on for years. And in 1975, in a follow-up to the Alpine County scheme for the Los Angeles Times, both Kite and Kill Hefner admitted the announced move was pretty much guerrilla theater from the beginning. In the same article, an Alpine County resident was quoted as saying, 
I don't think they're as dangerous as we thought at the time, and that he had come to realize that probably homosexuals already lived in Alpine, but none are out of the closet that he knew of, he added. One raised consciousness at a time is the best that they could hope for. Here it is, Morris Kite. <laughs>